the failure of Concord is absolutely massive. Beyond the memeing on the terribly bland cast that seems to have been generated by AI to achieve maximum woke points, beyond the uninspired derivative gameplay that suffers from the usual flaws of most hero shooters, such as inflated loot pools and low pop-off potential while being possibly the slowest hero shooter to ever exist. This game is a total financial failure, probably one of the biggest of the modern gaming era. This isn't small potatoes like Dydalic Entertainment getting their hands on the Gollum license before ever making a 3D game. This is big, bad Sony Entertainment throwing ungodly amounts of money into an obvious dumpster fire. In a desperate bid to hook their installed player base onto the live service model, Sony has produced one of the biggest pieces of shit I have ever seen. Now, Concord was just a small piece of Sony's multi-pronged plan. And it's actually only one of 12 live service games that Sony has been working on for the past couple of years. However, only one of those live service games has released to any amount of success. You've probably heard of it, Helldivers 2. Though that game was not without its controversy when after a few weeks of it being released on Steam, they attempted to gatekeep the game by forcing players to sign up for PlayStation accounts. And this actually made the game unplayable in multiple countries. Thankfully, Sony decided to reverse that decision so you can continue to spread democracy to the bug menace. But to me, this is a clear demonstration of how out of touch Sony executives are with the modern internet. And this is only further evidenced by their proud release of Concord. And by the way, of Sony's 12 live service games that they were developing, they handpicked six of them to push over the finish line with extra resources, and Concord was one of these. So they considered this game good enough to make the top of the pile, and I would really like to see what tragedies await us on the bottom half. Now I'm a numbers guy and I fancy myself a context creator. So I want videos like this to contain hard facts, verifiable numbers, so they can stand as a historical document of sorts. And here's a rather interesting number for you. $200 million in production costs, conservatively. Eight years of production time, 150 employees, and a grand peak player count of only 700 on Steam. If I was a Sony executive, I'd pick up my thousand times folded Japanese still, go over to Firewalk headquarters, and start downsizing. Oh, but it appears this is already happening. At least according to this leaked hiring document, which shows that the creative leads have been let go. And I guess the game of Concord is competently programmed. I haven't really seen any bugs or glitches posted, but the actual coding quality was never the problem with this game. It's really that it's another uninspired, bland, derivative, hero FPS shooter slop that somehow managed to siphon nearly a quarter of a billion dollars away from Sony before they looked up and questioned, does anyone even want to play this game? The low beta numbers should have been enough of a sign that this was doomed to fail, as even in beta, this game only peaked at 2,300 players. And that's when it was brand spanking new and free to play. Because by the way, the full release version of this game costs 40 freaking dollars. And much like Suicide Squad or the Avengers game, I don't know what corpo suit got it in their head that you can charge any amount of dollar sign on the door to get into these live service experiences. When the simple fact of the matter is, live service games do not exist without a player base. As the longest lasting games of that model have shown us, like World of Warcraft, Counter-Strike, even Fortnite, you either go completely free to play with a bunch of microtransactions, or you have a subscription based model, which is kind of archaic in the modern era. These executives really need to stop it because no one is paying more than $15 to have a Founders Pack skin in any of these flavor of the month, live service, FPS, hero slop shooters that come out pretty damn regularly. I mean, even if this game had attracted a decent sized audience, would it have really been able to contend with the monoliths like Call of Duty, Counter-Strike, Valorant. These are games that completely monopolize your time, and if you come out with the style of Concord, you're not really presenting a viable second option. But for some reason, the developers or the publishers committed to the hefty price tag on the game, and now they're committed to making a couple of seasons of content for the people who did actually put money down. 
but what is any of that content going to be worth if this game has literally less than 100 players as of the time of this recording? And if this game can't even field a lobby by the end of September, does Sony just pull the game and hand out refunds? Because <laughs> I severely doubt that. Now, some people may say, oh, those are just Steam numbers. I'm sure there's way more players on console. And I hate to burst your bubble, but this game failed to even reach 60th place in the top sellers on its launch. And we actually have a handy dandy website that can give us some really interesting numbers. If you go to the PlayStation Network's profiles website, we can actually see how many people have purchased this game and then completed corresponding trophies. And as you can see, less than 1,250 people have actually bought this game, with 95% of them getting the trophy for getting your first elimination. That makes the total peak player base of Concord less than 2,000 people across all available platforms. That's less than the Hyenas beta, which was seen as such an abysmal failure by Sega that they decided to not even release that game. Redfall, Xbox's biggest failure from last year, actually peaked at 6,000 concurrent players on Steam, and I'm sure it had roughly the equivalent or more on Xbox. Hell, even one of the most infamous wet farts in all of FPS history, Brink, had 2,600 peak players when it re-released on Steam in 2017. For a game with this level of clout, to never even reach $100,000 in total sales is absolutely insane and will definitely be studied in future textbooks. And I'm certain that Sony will completely reimagine their easy money live service game development policy. Understand that Sony canceled a standalone Last of Us multiplayer game to get Concord out the door. While that franchise is getting Golden Globes and Emmy nominations, and the game sells so well and is so high in the critical reviews that they can remaster their remasters and still make a profit. Sony actually had specially designed controllers made for the Concord launch, and they even attached themselves to Amazon's upcoming Secret Levels show, which will feature a full-length episode of lore about a video game that less than 100 people are playing right now. Imagine, literally 10,000 times the amount of people who have played Concord will watch this episode and think to themselves, what the hell is this game? I've never heard of this before. By my estimation, this is all really the fault of ex-Sony CEO Jim Ryan. And he really championed the whole DEI development trend that happened in Sony after they moved to California in the late 2010s. Jim spent most of his career at Sony in a pissing match with Xbox's CEO Phil Spencer over live service games and streaming rights. And in the recent antitrust lawsuit between the two, we actually found out that PlayStation is really no more profitable than Xbox. It just happens to have a larger install base. This is why they've taken to porting all their old games to PC, and with the recent releases, simul launching them on PC. Though, to quote a great man, They're not sending their best. I just wanted to discuss this event with you guys before Concord faded into oblivion. To only ever be mentioned again in the inevitable, worst games of the 2020s videos that'll be produced toward the ends of this decade. It's yet another shake-and-bake woke hero shooter to throw upon the ever-increasing pile of garbage. But I think we can take heart in the fact that games take so long to develop now that what we're seeing is really the last dying gasps of a political activist stranglehold that we've had on Western entertainment for about a decade plus. And now that money isn't free, higher interest rates, higher real estate prices and all that, now publishers have to make a profit and they have to give the players what they actually want. They no longer have the financial leeway to grandstand or prop up the message. And we've already seen a few major publishers talking about how they're trimming the fat, cutting out the representation, diversity, and wokeness, and just going back to simple games. In the case of Sony, they're talking about returning to AA mid-budget titles, and honestly, I think that's the solution for everybody. One of the major failures of modern gaming is that games cost so much, take so long to develop, have such large production teams that by the time they're released, they're already behind the trends. 
And I will discuss that in another video in the future, so I really recommend you subscribe. Comment down below how you feel about this Concord drama. I want to know, are you a Sony fan or are you a Sony hater? Are you just a Concord hater? Because I definitely am. But anyway, it's been real. My name is Sourheart. I'll catch you all in the next video.